Humans are really adaptable. We'll just adapt to whatever whatever our environment is. Mm -hmm. And we have just learned to live in this space really well. And it doesn't it doesn't feel like a sacrifice. At the end of this month, we'll have been in our tiny house for two years. The the freedom within our lifestyle, I think, is just it feels like a constant sort of gift to ourselves. For us, it's it's um, it's the whole picture. It's the whole process for us of of recognizing where we were financially, of, of taking the steps, and that's a really hard part for a lot of people, is actually starting that process of, of making sacrifices in your life to simplify, to start saving more money, to start spending less money. Mm -hmm. And that whole process um, really started making, or made us question uh, our, our, our life, our consumption, our expenditures, mm -hmm. and then we started to simplify a little bit more, and then we started thinking about the tiny house, and then we were building the tiny house, and it's the whole journey that's that, mm -hmm. now to where we are. It didn't happen overnight, and I think where we are now isn't a result of just one of those mm -hmm. pieces. It's a result of the entire journey, the whole path for us. We both had finished school and we were starting our adult life, kind of ready to launch out into the world. And one night we sat and tallied up our debts because we realized mm -hmm. we were really kind of living outside of our, our means. And from our combined student loan debt and a rural property that we had um, purchased together, we were $96,000 in debt. And it was just incredibly sobering and we we knew we had to make some really big changes. I mean, a lot of it was student loan debt, mm -hmm. but we still, we were using credit cards sort of indiscriminately. We were going on little trips when, whenever we felt like it. Mm -hmm. um, so we changed everything. We moved to a different location into a one bedroom apartment. We started using only cash. We were able to get out of debt in 20 months. We went from lying awake at night, stressing about our debt load to feeling like we suddenly had all these options and mm -hmm. we no longer wanted to spend money the same way. You know, we actually whiteboarded. We had a whiteboard and we wrote down everything that we, we owed, everything we had and all the money coming in and all the money going out and that, that was really sobering. Every time we'd make a payment on our debt, we would update the whiteboard and it went from minus 96,000 and I remember when we hit minus 50,000, we were like, yeah, yes, we're only $50,000 in debt. And then we started forecasting forward and going, we can't wait till we have zero. You know, like yeah. we don't have a penny to our name. That's going to be awesome. When we got out of debt soon after we had our, our daughter and um, we just continued to live really frugally. We stayed in our one bedroom apartment. Mm -hmm. We we just really enjoyed that new way of living. We buy everything secondhand, most everything that we can, and, and just having a lot less. It was really wonderful having a new baby and having minimal possessions, having no debt. We started saving money and going into, you know, the opposite where we had, we were tallying up our savings. And our whole plan was to get a, you know, chunk of money for a down payment on a house. And we got to that point where we were like, well, we could leap now, we could buy a house. and. You know the market in the city that we live in it was just it was really we had to really think about do we want to now you know a, take on a huge mortgage and although people really tend to view that as a different kind of debt for us we'd gone from this very very heavy burden of mm -hmm. debt to, to feeling very free and so we envisioned a different a different solution we were thinking we love living small mm -hmm. We don't know that we'll for sure stay in our city forever. So if we build a tiny house, we have the freedom of, of living without debt and still being able to save money. And also if in the future we want to relocate to a smaller community, we can do that. We can bring our little house with us. So when we went through that process of, of analyzing, sort of taking stock of all of our debt, we categorized it in a number of different ways. We had a huge spreadsheet. And one of, one of the things was to, to sort of rank the debt in the amount of interest we were paying on it, the, the total uh, amount of debt for each liability. And we were really honest with ourselves and we, we had to make some really serious changes. So um, we moved. Um, I got a different job. I was working for myself at the time. We we looked at all of our expenses and we just slashed where we could. We were super aggressive. I think going to cash was yeah. one of our biggest strategies. Yeah. Yeah. No longer using the card, we broke down what our weekly expenses were. And every Monday, we, we still do this. We take out cash for the week and um, 
when that cash is gone, it's very visible. We have our little glass jars up here that have our cash in them and yeah. when the money's gone. Yeah, and that part of it, we set up a really realistic budget and that's something we revisit all the time. It's not it's not a do it once and, and it works forever because mm -hmm. things change in your life, you know, whether you have kids or you move or whatnot, it's always changing that, that amount of money you need. At the start of our getting out of debt, process, we also did a year experiment where we didn't buy anything new for a year. Mm. If we needed something, it had to be secondhand, but it was also just trying to go with exactly what we already had. And if we really needed something, we would um, write it up on our, our chalkboard and we would usually wait a week or two mm -hmm. and and not let ourselves go get it. Even secondhand, we would try and see, do we actually need this? Can we borrow it from someone? Yeah. Um, can we improvise? Mm -hmm. And that really curbed our spending. Very really makes, yeah, it really made us question everything we mm -hmm. brought into our house. Mm -hmm. I don't think I was coming around to a tiny house as fast as you were. Um, when the opportunity came to us where there was a tiny house that had just been started, that's where the decision sort of was made to actually, well, can we do this? And we actually had a two week window to make a decision. Yeah, I, I mm. have been looking at tiny houses for years. I'm a, I'm a nurse and at night on night shifts, I would sit and, and just dream about these little mm -hmm. homes. And I always thought, oh geez, if I was a single person, this is what I would want to do. And I thought, you know, maybe down the road when we're a lot older, this would be an adventure that we'd have. But I never actually considered it with children. Mm -hmm. Um, and then this tiny house that our friend had bought that was just framed in on on the trailer um, came available and I was like, oh my goodness, we could actually do this. And, and I was it, saying, I never said I wanted to live in a tiny house. I said a small house, not a tiny house. <laughs> so we had to make a decision quickly because yeah. there was a lot of interest in the tiny house and... and yeah, yeah, two weeks from the time that we were told about it to buy. I really had to pitch it. Yeah. And, and <laughs> it was not only like, do you want to live in this house, but do you want to spend the next Which we, X number of yeah. weekends <laughs> completing it, please, even though you have no building experience. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. so so we did, she talked me into it. <laughs> so our plan was to work on it uh, just weekends. Jarvis was working full time and I was working a half time nursing position. And uh, we thought, oh, it'll take about four to five months. So we started in May and we thought we'd be in for about November. Mm -hmm. um, and it took 14 months and it was a really interesting process. It, in some ways, it was really, really exciting and fun. Um, we got to learn a whole bunch of new skills, you in particular. We spent our evenings on YouTube watching, uh, le trying to learn how to yeah, do all the things Yeah, our evenings of do. watching, you know, mindless entertainment stuff on, on the internet turned into watching videos on how to wire an outlet or, you know, how to how to flash a roof or something like that. Everything yeah. changed. Yeah. yeah, it was also really difficult. Um, by the time we were just about finished, I sort of hated the tiny house <laughs> for a while. Uh, I remember my mom asking me if you could, if you were to do it again, do you think you would choose to do the tiny house again? And I, I remember saying, I don't know, because it was a huge sacrifice as a family. We had, I think we calculated 56 weekends where Jarvis was working at the house and I was taking care of our daughter and we went from being this super cohesive little family that, you know, we were all about leisure time and weekends. being together and weekends mm -hmm. to just slaving away every weekend and a lot of weeknights on the house. But now that, you know, as soon as we moved in and we were actually living in it, we were like, yes, this was totally worth it. But it was it was a big endeavor. Yeah, it was, it was definitely a stressful time. Um, it was everything was new for for me and for you. You were doing the primary caregiving role for for Aurelia at the time, and and yeah, as Joss, Jocelyn said, every weekend I was here, and then and then many nights of the week uh, just working working away. And sometimes you'd come down and you'd be just so excited to see see the <laughs> progress. And I had spent half the day moving. You know, we had all of our hardwood flooring and all the wall cladding piled up in the house, and it's such a small house that you know if I had all of the hardwood piled here and I needed to work here, half the day we'd be moving all this pile of wood over there or up into We're the loft. The loft. Yeah. So she'd come down and she'd be so excited to see how much progress I made on a Saturday <laughs> and I'd be like, yeah, I worked all day moving 500 pounds of lumber from that side of the house to this side of the house. 
we initially moved in as a family of three. So uh, behind us, there is uh, our, our kids' room. So when we built the tiny house, we, we wanted to make sure that we would have a separate room for our daughter at the time. So she has her own little bedroom back there. And, um, and that, that helps, that helps big time. That she has her own little place that she can go in and close her door. And um, it's, a, it's a great little place for her. Now that there's four of us, it's become a kid's room, not our daughter's room. Uh, I think having the room still though is gonna be key for, uh, for us to live in this house. We're not going to be in this house forever, we know that. Um, as the kids get bigger, it's, it's going to become a challenge. So we don't know when that is going to happen, but we're just gonna ride it out as long as we can for now. But having, having a separate bedroom for the kids, I think is, is key. We've seen a lot of designs online where, or videos where people have sort of a little you know, a little nook or something for the kids' room. And I think that would be really challenging because they have, kids have lots of stuff. Their room is, is sort of their domain and when they're playing, it's, it's a mess and that's fine. Um, but if that was in our living room all of the time, mm -hmm. it, would be, it would be a little more challenging. Living in, in a house that, that is this small, it really promotes living a lot of time outside, which we love. And there's so many windows in the house. We feel like we're so much more connected to the mm -hmm. seasons. When we lived in this, right in the city and we were in an apartment, we sometimes wouldn't go outside for most of the day. And here in the warm weather, we fling the door open first thing in the morning and we don't close it until evening. And the kids are running around outside so much more than they would be, I think, mm -hmm. in an apartment or even a regular, a regular house. Um, this winter was challenging. We had a really cold winter and I think almost everyone I know felt pretty cagey by the mm -hmm. end of winter and we definitely did. We were super, super excited for spring this yeah. year. So it is built on a 32 foot long trailer, a standard eight foot wide. The square footage on the lower level is about 224 square feet, 225 square foot down below and about 100 square foot loft up top. So overall, if you calculate the loft, it's about 325 square feet. We heat and cook with propane. Mm -hmm. um, our hot water comes from a hot water on demand, which is tucked up into our bedroom closet in the loft. Yeah. And uh, we operate off of 15 amps, which is just a standard plug into yeah. a um, outlet from the owner's home. And I wanted to build a house. So wherever we showed up, we could plug into a regular outlet into a house and our entire house could be powered by a 15 amp circuit. We don't have a blow dryer. Yeah. Um, blow dryer is off limits. Yeah. <laughs> we, when we use our uh, food processor, sometimes we unplug our dehumidifier. Um, so we're just really aware of our energy use and our, actually our plan is to go off grid this summer. We have mm -hmm. solar panels because in the future when we have our own property, we'd like to be off grid. Um, so our, our electrical needs are very small. Mm -hmm. We have a composting toilet um, and we've found we've adjusted to that really, really easily. No. Because we're getting into gardening, we're finding it's just another way that we feel connected to natural systems. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we've we've been here two years, so our first bin of, of compost that um, has been laying fallow for close to two years is now completely broken down and mm -hmm. we may have the soil tested just to mm -hmm. show that it's microbially neutral at this point or so pathogen free almost, pathogen free yeah. yeah so it's that's been interesting we have five gallon buckets we have four of them and when the bucket when you go to the washroom you just toss um, organic material we use wood chips and you cover your waste and then when the bucket's full we take it out to our our spot in the woods where we add it to the larger bin and we cover everything with ample amounts of straw and then we leave it when it when that bin out in the wood, woods is full it lays fallow for two years uh, we're actually on well water so the site that we rent from they have a well uh, and it's been fine. And then we do have a gray water system. So obviously uh, we have a composting toilet for all, all the, the black water, but the gray water, so for the sinks and the tub, we, when we moved here, we had a, uh, a gray well dug and put in for us. Mm -hmm. And uh, we use that and it's been working fine. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we're just really careful about what products we use. We make a lot of our own body care products and then we buy from our local soap exchange so that all our shampoo and dish soap is all natural. So yeah. we make sure nothing goes into the gray well um, that would be toxic. We mm -hmm. have a deck that wraps around most of the front of the house and that really expand, extends our living space. And then off the kids' room, they have a door to the outside and they have their own little deck to play on. 
Um, we have some chickens, which has been really wonderful for eggs. We don't have any pets at this time because the house is feeling a little too small for a dog <laughs> or a cat. I don't want to maintain any other small creatures. <laughs> so chickens have been great. Um, we have uh, a garden built into our hillside and we're kind of just novice gardeners and really enjoying that. Behind the garden is a really beautiful pond we're really lucky to have access mm -hmm. to. And then uh, Jarvis built the kids a really beautiful little tree house in the woods. And everything that we build, we make sure can come with us because we're planning to um, buy our own acreage in the next, um, in the next couple of years, debt free. Uh, we wanna do that mortgage free. And so that's what we're saving for. I think it's important uh, to acknowledge that we have been really privileged in being able to do this because I don't think that this is necessarily accessible to everyone. You've been able to learn to, you know, build this house yourself, so that's really cut down on our costs. But for people who aren't inclined to build for themselves, it can actually be really expensive to build a tiny house. Mm -hmm. I think there's a fallacy that they're really cheap, and they can be, but we're seeing a lot of tiny houses online that Per Close square to $100, footage, yeah. yeah, they're they're really um, cost prohibitive. So, for us, this has worked out really well. We've been able to find a really great site. Uh, I think that not everyone can find such a perfect site where they have all this green space. We have an, a space where no one minds us being here. Mm -hmm. um, the property owner is really happy to have us, and there's there are no issues. But I think that people have to be real, really realistic that. Um, you're probably not going to park it right in the middle of the city and not everyone is going to love your tiny house mm -hmm. and there are issues with septic and how you dispose of your waste. You need to be really responsible mm -hmm. um, and careful about the environment around you. I think living in our house, personally, I just feel really free. I feel like we can, because we don't have debt, because we don't have a lot of possessions, and because that truly makes us happy, we have a lot of freedom. If one of us decided that we wanted to change our career tomorrow, we absolutely could. If one of us decided we wanted to stay home full time with our kids, we could. We are architecting our life. I, I don't ever get the sense or feel that we're you know, along for the ride. We very much feel in control of our lives. We we have a vision of what we want um, for our kids, how we want to raise them. We feel that we're coming into a time ecologically where, you know, the, the generation that we're bringing up, they're, they're probably going to need to know how to live with less, to live more simply. I don't think that the path that the world is on will be sustained for much longer. So I feel like we're trying to give our, our kids some tools in understanding how much they actually need and how much um, it takes to, to really be happy.